Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, good morning. morning. And welcome to worship here at Topsail Presbyterian Church. Let us pray. Direct and help us, O Lord, in all our deeds, that in all our works begun, continue you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Deb, thank you for that opening music. I think we are ready to worship now. (laughs) Friends, again, it's so good to worship with you. Pray that you feel at home here. If you're looking for a church home, uh, pray that you would find the friendship card or the friendship pad on the pew near you. Sign your name to it, uh, that we can share information and let others know what God is doing in our midst. Uh, Again, if you want to visit with me or uh, some other folks this afternoon after worship, please, uh, please join us as we do that. I do hope that you did find a copy of the newsletters. I know we have hard copies in the Narthex, and also we have electronic copies online, but it highlights different things going on in the life of our congregation. It reflects <clears throat> on a wonderful homecoming. It reflects on a vacation Bible school and the upcoming start of our Tuesday night kids program. So again, we're excited for these opportunities. Pray you would think about how God is calling you to serve alongside of us. Uh, Friends, we do have communion this morning. We are glad to gather for worship and gather for communion. All of the elements are gluten-free. We're glad that everyone can fully participate. Also, you'll notice uh, we do have a basket in front of the chancel. This is for the PATH offering. PATH is 
an acronym for Presbyterian Answer to Hunger. In addition to your uh, general church offering, if you'd like to, uh, to give to support our neighbors with food insecurity uh, in, our, in our community, you may do so during the opening hymn this morning. So the, uh, the path basket is down front. We usually do that on the second Sunday of the month. Uh, it is so good to be in worship with you today. I was traveling last week. I was the guest preacher at the Village Chapel of Bald Head Island. It was a great pulpit to preach from. It is really nice to be back at a home pulpit. So a uh, home field advantage, you might say. But again, uh, so good to worship with you, beloved. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Jack. Will you call us to worship, sir? We gather to proclaim the promises, to retell the stories, to remember who we are as people of God. Let us worship. Let us stand in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn. You may be seated. Friends, we come to a time of confession. We come to a time of confession, maybe expecting condemnation. Hear this good news. We come to this time knowing that God's grace is sufficient. We come to this time not with condemnation, but with but what we say here with God and with one another may be heard in the context of love. Beloved, please join me in today's prayer of confession. Beautiful Savior, you have made your law clear. Love, love one another. Owe one another nothing but love. Do no wrong to a neighbor. But we have not mastered what it is to love. 
we have fallen short, causing harm to others through careless action and thoughtless lack of action. Forgive us. Teach us how to live more fully, more perfectly, as generously as you love, following your law and fulfilling your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Beloved, remember your baptism and hear the good news. The saving, the saying is worthy, is sure and worthy of full acceptance. Christ died for us. Christ was raised for us by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the grace of God. Whatever we have done, whatever we have left undone, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us stand. In just a moment, we will take a moment to greet each other in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ as forgiven people. Yes, pass the peace to someone you know because Lord knows, friends and family, we need peace. But also, friends, pass the peace to someone you do not know yet. Beloved, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Share the peace.
Friends, before the uh, children's sermon, I'd like for uh, the Brown family to come join me for just a few moments. Good morning. Good to see you. I'd like to int- introduce to you Creighton and Paige and Walker and Miles Brown. We give thanks that God has brought them to our midst. We give thanks that you have joined us in worship and fellowship, and now we make public what God is doing in our lives and in their lives. So we uh, receive them into membership. We have an upcoming baptism. Uh, whenever Miles can clear his calendar, we're going to figure that out. So friends, we give thanks for uh, this family. Friends, hear these words from scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. I have a question for you. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and mission through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Again, Paige and Creighton and Miles and Walker, we give thanks for what God is doing in our midst, that this family becomes a part of of this family, that we undertake the Christian nurture of these children until such time that they too confess faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, let us pray. Oh God, for this family, we give you thanks. For the power of your spirit, we give you thanks. Oh God, for the nurture that we find in this place and among these people, we give you thanks. Oh God, help us with this undertaking. Help us as we serve Christ together. Help us as we love one another as you call us to. Be with Paige and Creighton and Walker and Miles. May we be their church home. And, O oh God, may we be the family of faith. Empower us by your Spirit that we might love one another as Christ loved us, honoring him in all that we say and do, giving our lives in service to others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, make welcome this new family. (laughs) At this time, any children in worship can join me down front for just a few moments. And after, after the children's sermon, when the children go back, if, uh, if this is your child's first time in, in Sunday school, uh, we would ask that you would go with them and help them uh, register and get information uh, for us. Good morning. good morning. It's good to see you. Who here has ever gotten in trouble before? <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, there's a strange thing. There's a strange thing that happens in worship. It is called the prayer of confession. All the all the bigger folks, they stand up uh, in body or in spirit and say it together. All the younger folks, they stand up in body or in spirit and say it together. And it's one of the things we say where it's like, Lord, look at all the ways I messed up this week. And do you think we'd say that to get in trouble? What do you think? No, we say that to be forgiven. Isn't that cool? Isn't that wonderful? That we say, yes, Lord, I messed up. Yes, Lord, I got this wrong. Yes, Lord, I could have gotten in trouble. But we're not in trouble because God loves us so much. So we're going to mess up. We might do things that are not great. We might do things that hurt others. But the wonderful thing every week, every day when we mess up, God's grace is big enough. God's grace is sufficient to forgive us. Now, hopefully we don't keep on sinning and rebelling so that we can put God's grace to the test. 
but we know that God loves us. We know that God's grace is good enough that we might say thank you by how we live and by how we love others. Okay, let's, let's pray together. You can repeat after me. Dear Lord, I mess up. When I mess up, you give grace. Help me say thank you by how I live. In Jesus' name, amen. You may go to your seats or you may go to Sunday school. Okay. Let us pray. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, Lord, let the words of my mouth, let the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and redeemer. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, The first reading comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you are listened to, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If that person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Uh, the, next, uh, the next ring is Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall, not commit, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summoned up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is already the moment for you to... W- ache from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk decently as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in illicit sex and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its, its desires. This is the word of the Lord.
prayers of confession are spoken aloud together in worship. And then they're followed by silent confession. And then they are followed by a promise of forgiveness. And then the promise of forgiveness is followed by a rousing, jazzy rendition of glory to God whose goodness shines on me. It is a celebratory song. It is a joyous song. I wonder why it is so joyous because we have received the promise of forgiveness. Friends, there was a quarterback, and he was a great college quarterback. And then this quarterback, I'm not going to say his name because he's not a great role model, but this quarterback left the college ranks and then went on to the NFL. And we can't say he was a never was in the NFL. He's a never has been. He's a, he's a, wait, I got that completely wrong. We can't say that he's a has been in the NFL. He's a never was. Okay, so when this quarterback went to the NFL, this quarterback was given an iPad, and this iPad could track the amount of time this quarterback watched game film. And when the coaches went back and saw how much game film this quarterback watched, guess how much? Zero. Zero. He's not a has-been, he's a never-was. And beyond that, this quarterback cheated at drug tests. Oh, no. This is not a recipe for success. It's probably more like a recipe for disaster. So there, of course, is that quarterback. And beloved, we have a prayer of confession because we come to this place of worship and we say, Lord, there are times when I messed up. Jesus in Scripture does not have a lot of patience for self-righteousness. When we come to life and we come to work and we say, Oh, Lord, thanks be to God for me. I am so perfect. I am so faithful. Do you see how there's not much room for self-improvement? We have a prayer of confession sometimes. We're called to make it a prayer of contrition. In fact, Jesus tells a story in the Gospel of Luke. And there are folks in the temple, they are going to worship. And a Pharisee stands by himself, and a Pharisee looks and he says this, God, thank you. God, thank you that I am not like these other people. God, thank you that I am not like the thieves and the rogues and the adulterers or even like this tax collector. Now standing far off, the tax collector beat his chest. The tax collector looked down at the floor. The tax collector could not even look up because he was busy in a prayer of confession. He said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And friends, in this story that Jesus tells, he says this, this tax collector went down to his home justified rather than the other, rather than the Pharisee, all who exalt themselves, they will be humbled, all who humble themselves, they will be exalted. At the beginning of worship today, we take care of the basics of business of an organization. We say, welcome. We say, we are glad that you are here. This time and this space that we share today, it is special. It is made more special because you are here. It sounds like a pretty normal routine for the gathering of folks. We have announcements. We say, did you see the newsletter? Did you see the bulletin? Did you sign the friendship pad? Did you see the prayer concerns or the visitor card? We have these things at the beginning of worship. We have a call to worship, and we sing a song, and then the worship service takes a very strange turn. We have a call to confession, 
we have a prayer of confession. And did you notice that the preacher joins in the prayer of confession? Wouldn't it be strange if I said, all right, y'all confess. I'm just going to take a few moments because I'm good. <laughs> I usually try to be very careful to say, please join me. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Even the Apostle Paul says, among sinners, I am the chief. Beloved, we have this prayer of confession that we come here and we confess in spirit and in truth, in faith and in love, that this is not too much for God's grace. This is not too much for God to handle. This is not too much for the love that we share. I must confess, I'm going to use a story I've used before. And if you've heard it before, then please forgive me. So that's the confession and forgiveness part, okay? All right, so I must confess I'm using a story that I've used before. If you've heard it before, please forgive me. Jerry Clower, the great Southern humorist, tells a story about a young boy who just keeps on telling lies. Can you imagine? Just makes up things. Well, the neighbors have a collie dog, and it's in the dog days of summer, if you want to use that. It's in the dog days of summer, and they shave this collie dog. They, they trim the body hair very short. They trim the head very short, and they leave a, a puff of fur around the neck. And the little boy runs into the house and says, Lion in the yard! Lion in the yard! And the dad says, Boy, you keep telling stories. You keep lying. You go upstairs. You pray. For 20 minutes, you confess your sin and you receive forgiveness from God. The boy goes upstairs, prays his confession, hopes to get forgiveness from God. The boy comes back downstairs, reports to the dad, Dad, I did what you said. I confessed my sin. I prayed to God. And God said the first time he saw that dog, he thought it was a lion too. That's not a very good prayer of confession. It's not a very good prayer. It might be a prayer of confession, but it's not a prayer of contrition. Even when I began that story, my prayer of confession was pretty crummy as well. Uh, please, uh, I must confess, I'm going to use a story I've used before. Please forgive me if you've heard it before. I don't care what you think I'm going to say it anyway. That's not a great prayer of confession either. Beloved, pray that we know what we are confessing during this practice in worship. It's a faithful thing to do. It's, a, it's an honest thing to do. Dear Lord, forgive me for the sins that I have done. Forgive me for the ones that I am about to. There might even be a recipe for confession and forgiveness. We have sin and then we have confession, and then we have forgiveness, and pray, then we have reconciliation. But one step that we might overlook is the step of contrition. It is realizing that we've done something wrong. In fact, being contrite means that we feel or we show sorrow and remorse for improper behavior and actions. My grandma, when she was in her late 80s, wrote a book, Confessions of the Contrite Heart. She was in her late 80s when she wrote it, and she wanted to drive around to all the nursing homes and retirement villages to give to the older people. We said, Grandma, there are not too many people older than you, but she wanted to bless people with these words of her faith. Friends, we can't skip pray we don't skip a step of contrition. You know, we could say, I, I sinned, I hurt someone, I regret what I've done. Regretting what you have done is different from regretting that you got caught. I'm sorry, I am sorry that I got caught. I regret that, I regret that I got caught. I didn't mean to do that, I did not mean to get caught. That sounds like a pretty crummy prayer of, Confession, beloved. 
The church has a habit of praying the prayer of confession, receiving forgiveness, saying a prayer of illumination, hearing scripture, hearing the anthem, and then hearing the sermon so that we may hear good news. Friends, the good news happens at that promise of forgiveness. If you don't hear anything else today, I hope that you heard those words of forgiveness. Whatever we have done, whatever we have left undone, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. The good news happens when we pray silently. The good news takes place when someone from within the church says, Hey, y'all, listen up. Listen to this. We have been forgiven. We've been forgiven for the things that we did. We are forgiven for the other things that we did not do and should have. We've been forgiven for the things that we did do or did not do, did not know about. That's the depths of God's amazing love. Beloved sinner, me and you, we are blessed, we are broken, and we are beloved all at the same time. And we ask a question. This is a prayer of confession. We could pray a prayer of confession and then have the promise of condemnation. We could. There are many people in our world and society, many people everywhere that are in a hurry to condemn one another. But Scripture tells us who is in a position to condemn. It is Christ who died, or rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of of God who also intercedes for us. The one that's in a position to condemn actually intercedes for us. Isn't that good news? The one, the only one that could be in a position to condemn is the very one that loves us, that lived for us, that was crucified for us, that was raised for us, and that now intercedes for us. Beloved, that's really, really good news. Jesus could condemn, but having taken on flesh and having known what it is like to be human, he intercedes for us. Friends, we heard good news earlier today. Hear this good news now. The question might be for the church, what do we do with this gift of grace? We could waste it. We could live in an attitude of gratitude, offering our lives and our service to the glory of God. We as the church, we respond with thanksgiving. God leads with grace and we respond with thanksgiving. And do we, are we called to put grace to the test? Let's see how much grace God has. We cannot test it. Should we continue in sin in order that it might increase by no means? How can we who died to sin go on living in it? We're made with one. We're made one with Christ in baptism. We're made one with Christ at this table. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, beloved. Because we are joyful in and of ourselves, or because of the God in whose image we are created, in whose image in Christ we are made anew, the God in whom alone we worship and adore. Why do we have these sacraments, baptism and communion? We do it because Jesus did it. He humbled himself enough to be baptized by John the Baptist. He humbled himself enough to share what he had at table with his disciples. He says, take and eat, take and drink, remember me. Do you think that we as the church might be humble enough to confess? So often our confession is in the context of community. Our confession, our accountability is held in trust by the other members of this community. After the sermon today, we have an affirmation of faith. It's called the Apostles' Creed, written centuries ago. Oftentimes, it's called a confession of faith. Friends, the prayers of confession and the confession of faith, they are very similar. Lord, you are God. I don't have to be. Lord, you are perfect. I don't have to be. Lord, I fall short. Lord, you love me enough to make up for that. The church claims, the church reclaims, the church confesses that, that God is God and we are not. 
We receive grace. We receive life from God. We receive new life from Jesus Christ. Pray that this impacts the way we live. If it does not, then we're not watching enough game film. If it does not, then we're cheating on the test. If it does not, we're wasting our time. If it does, thanks be to God, we've discovered new meaning and purpose for our time. What a gift from God. This chance to grow. This chance to glorify God. Confessing it is an act of faith. Oh God, you are God, I am not. So often, friends, when we fail to speak a word of confession, when we fail to pray a prayer of confession, so often we miss. We miss a promise of forgiveness. Let us pray. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. May it be so. Amen. Let us stand in body or spirit as we affirm our faith using these words from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed, friends, you said that you believe in the forgiveness of sins. Pray that we hear this word of love today. Let us give back to the glory of God this morning. And as we do, we may sing together. Let us talents and tongues employ. Let us give back to the glory of God.
O God, for these gifts we give you thanks. We pray, O God, that you might take them as they are, take our very lives as they are, but summon out what they might be by your Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. We come from north and south, east and west to be at table with our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, if you have not felt welcome this week, if you've been in a place or a space or a time where you have not felt welcome, feel welcome here. Hear these words of welcome. You are welcome here with your faith. You are welcome here with your doubt. You are welcome here with your peace of mind. You're welcome here with your strife. Beloved, God's grace is sufficient for all the things that we hold. Isn't it good news that God holds us? Hear this good news. We come to this table. Christ makes us welcome. We learn how to make others welcome here as well. We join with all the generations that have sat at this table and shared this meal. All of our elements are gluten-free today, so uh, come, and, come and join. We'll come forward to uh, take communion. The bread will be to the interior. The cup will be to the exterior, so you may return to your seats by the windows. I'd ask that we hold it all together and we all share communion at the same time after everyone has been served. Let us pray. Beloved, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O oh God, it is truly right to give you our thanks and our praise. O oh God, it is truly right to give you thanks for all the good gifts of this life. For the life that we have in you, created in your image, the new life we have in Christ that we might have hope, that we might have faith, that we might have love, that you might compel us to love one another even as we love you. For this congregation, we give you thanks. For the areas in which we fall short, we know that your grace is sufficient. May we have grace for ourselves and one another. O oh God, we give thanks for all of those that have borne witness to your goodness throughout all the generations, and we join our voices to those who sing your praise. Come, Lord Jesus, our host to be. Bless these gifts, O God, bestowed by Thee. Bless us, O Lord, to be Your church, to be Your body in the world, following You and serving one another. O God, pour out Your Holy Spirit on this bread that for us it might be the body of Christ. Pour out Your Holy Spirit on this cup that for us it might be the, the blood of Christ. And O God... Pour out your Holy Spirit on these, your faithful people gathered in this place and at home. 
that we might be the church in the world, in Christ and through Christ. Amen. Friends, after giving, at, he was at ta- our Lord Jesus Christ was at table with his disciples. And after giving thanks, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this bread is the new covenant, sealed. This bread is the new covenant. <laughs> this bread is my body, broken for you. This bread is my body, broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you take this bread, remember me. And in the same way, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you take this cup, remember me. Friends, as often as we take this bread and this cup, we proclaim Jesus' life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Again, friends, we'll come forward. If you need to be served at your seat, we are, uh, it's a joy to do that. And uh, we share this joyful feast of the people of God. All are welcome.
This is the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Please add to your prayer list Tegan Ferry, an 18-month-old uh, little girl at MUSC in Charleston. Uh, her grandparents, Cherry, uh, Jerry and Chip Sin, and also be in prayer for the family of Jackson Tyler McClam, uh, a child who passed away earlier this week. So we pray for a peace that surpasses all understanding for a situation that surpasses all understanding. Let us pray. In the depth of your great love, O oh God, we can confess. We can confess, O oh God, when we mess up. We can confess, O oh God, when our strength wanes. We can confess, O oh God, when we are impatient and unloving with others and with ourselves. We can confess, O oh God, and you can forgive. By the depths of your amazing love, we have this hope. O oh God, be with this country and be with this community. Oh God, for so many that remember tomorrow, we ask your special blessing. Oh God, we pray that you would be with this congregation, that we might be the body of Christ in the world. Oh God, send us from this table renewed and renourished with your food and with your spirit. Oh God, be with the family of Jackson Tyler McClam. O God, be with Tegan and her family and all that love her. O God, we give you thanks for this day. Every day we have from you, every day we have with you, indeed, is a gift. May we use it well. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one that calls us by name, the one that saves us from the wages of, or the wages of sin and death, the one that bids us welcome at this table, and the one that calls us to serve with joy and thanksgiving. We pray this in his name, just as he teaches us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand in body or spirit as we sing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. See that we do have different parts for the verses, and uh, sing accordingly. Let us stand in body or spirit.
I did notice that the men had to sing the part, take away the love of sinning. That's, that's fair enough. <laughs> Friends, amen as we proclaim this good news and as we share this good news with the world. Jimmy Buffett once wrote, Friends, I don't know where it all ends. If I knew, I might toss out my anchor. Beloved, we don't know where it all ends. While we're living, it's like we're looking through a mirror dimly. But we have this hope until such time that we come face to face with God. God's grace is sufficient. We can confess our sins, yes. We do not receive God's condemnation, but we receive God's grace God's love, God's redemption, God's salvation. Take heart, take hope, and hear this good news and share it with the others. Beloved, may joy and nothing less find you along the way. Friends, may you be blessed. May you always continue to be a blessing. And may love's own light, may love's own crucified, risen light guide me and you and countless others all the way home. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. As forgiven people, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Go in peace.